Let them drink water by Daniel Engber About the author Daniel Engber writes about science, culture, and its sports for online magazine Slate. He also edits Slate's Science and Explainers column. He has a master's degree in neuroscience and has worked in research labs at Columbia, the University of California, San Francisco, and the National Institutes of Health. Background on soft drink machines in school A typical 20 ounce bottle of a sugared soft drink from a vending machine contains 250 calories. Not surprisingly, government policy makers and others have targeted such machines in their effort to reduce obesity rates, particularly among children. The state of California has banned these products outright from all public schools. Nationally, the 2012 Child Nutrition Act includes restrictions for school vending machines across the country. Still, some people are concerned about the financial consequences of such legislation. Schools often use funds from soft drink sales to support athletics, field trips, and other activities. Further complicating the issue, such restriction and even outright bans sometimes extend outside public schools. In San Francisco, for example, Mayor Gavin Newsom banned high-calorie sweetened beverages from all the city property. Summary In Let Them Drink Water, Daniel Engber examined the, the social and cultural basis behind well-meaning public initiatives to tax junk food, especially the ways in which these proposals will disproportionately affect the poor and create an apartheid of pleasure. In the winter of 1942, psychologist A.J. Carlson suggested that if fat persons were taxed, example, 20 pounds for each pound of overweight, it would cover the war cost and control fatness in the U.S. After 67 years, fat tax has come back on the table. Some people have demanded that the fat persons are supposed to pay extra tax, and others want to impose a very heavy tax on soft drinks. The insurance industry will, pre will pressurize the legislative body to pass the fat tax bill soon. But some writers are against the bill. People still have doubt about passing the fat tax bill. The penalties now are not enough to reduce the weight of anyone. But supporters of the fat tax say that one day it will be as effective to reduce overeating and diabetes as taxing cigarettes has brought down rates of smoking and death from lung cancer. To convince the voters and to get tax out of soda, we should prove the beverage is a drug. But is drinking a Coke as bad as smoking a cigarette? In his bestseller, The Kind of Overheating, David Kessler mentions that junk food changes the biological circuit of our brains. The chocolate-covered biscuit, he says, activates the brain's pleasure system. It diverts our natural liking and makes us eat carelessly. Junk food is made in such a way that we eat like a drug addict and become its slave. It is hyper palatable. We cannot stop ourselves from eating such food. Nature has made us feel two types of hunger, 
One is when we feel very weak, we eat to stay alive. The other is hedonic hunger. We feel this type of hunger even when we are full. It is our desire to eat for pleasure. This hunger is useful when the food is scarce because we can collect calories for hard times in the future. But this desire makes us fat if the food is easily available. Junk food is designed in such a way that it exploits human beings' sensual nature. Like cigarettes, additive elements are added to junk food and they activate our desire to eat even when we don't need food. Soda's sweetness excites our pleasure and eight bubbles excites our facial nerves. It is very difficult to show the difference between drug and delicious food. Soda and candy are not the only foods that excite the brain, but coffee, video games, Twitter, meditation, and any pleasing or painful things activate the brain. It is ironic that supporters of healthy eating are food lovers. They say that one can eat organic food a lot because it is natural and tasty. For centuries, cooks have been trying to satisfy our hedonic hunger. Fat tax affects the poor people directly. It discriminates the people who can afford expensive drinks from those who can buy only cheap drinks. The academics writing in the New England Journal of Medicine say that sugared drinks are not necessary for survival and that the poor can drink water from the tap free of cost. The writers do not understand the problems of the poor. Tax levied on cigarettes and alcohol becomes a burden for the poor people because they are the main consumers and they might get some more advantage from this revenue. But it is not sure that fat tax benefits them. If the poor are given the water instead of soda, they will surely get pleasure. There are a lot of laws against delightful and harmful drugs and behaviors. They are necessary to protect our health. There may be a discrimination in controlling different kinds of drugs, but there should not be such injustice in the case of pleasure giving soft drinks. Comprehension According to Enver, what is the public's attitude towards taxing junk food and soda? How does he support support this generalization. Eng banko bhanai ma junk food ra soda ma lagai ne tax prati janadharana ke cha? Ke uni yo samaniya karan lai samarthan gardachan? Answer. While politicians, pundits and other support such tax, the public still has strong reservations about fat tax. Engber notes that state-level penalties on junk food are too small to make anyone lose weight, and efforts to pass more heavy-handed laws have so far fallen short. 2. Policy makers and public health experts who support taxing junk food draw an analogy between junk food and cigarettes. According to Engber, what redefinition does the analogy require? Junk food ma kar lagauna samarthan garne niti nirmata haru ra sarvajanik swaste bisegya swaste bisesagya le junk food ra churot bich tulana garda chan. Engbar ko bhanai ma yo tulana garna kasto punar parivasa ko avasek chha. Answer. If policymakers want to 
to police people's eating habit and tax on healthy food in the way cigarettes are taxed they need to re redefine food as something else and make people think that it's a drug 3 what does engberg find ironic about so many advocates for healthy eating swastikar khana ko titi dherai samarthak haru ko bare ma engberg engberg kasto bengya fela pardachan answer Engberg finds it ironic that so many advocates for healthy are also outspoken gourmands. According to the writer, however, these gourmands would exclude their own preferred unhealthy foods from taxation and stigmatization. Some tastes are more equal than other. In paragraph 10, Engberg discusses the organic food movement. How does he define its central dogma? Engberg organic khadi avyan ko bare ma shalfal garda chan. Isko mulhud siddhanta lai uni kasari parivasit garda chan. Answer. The writer claims that the central dogma of organic food movement is that you can be a foodie and a health nut at the same time and that what's real and natural tastes better anyway. Journal Entry According to Engberg, organic food advocates argue that real natural healthy food tastes better anyway do you agree that natural food tastes better than junk food engberg ko bhanai ma organic food ka samarthak haru vastavik prakritik swasthakar khane kura je bhaye pani jhan swadilo huncha bhanne tarka gardachan prakritik khana ko swad junk food bhanda ramro huncha bhanne bhanai sanga tapai kati sahmat hunu huncha Answer. As organic food advocates argue that real, natural, healthy food tastes better anyway. I agree that natural food tastes better than junk food. When it comes to food, flavor is everything. Many people are of the opinion that organic food has very nice flavor. Many people buy organic food because it's beneficial to environment. But if you have ever compared it to non-organic food, you will have noticed the difference in taste. While it is good ethically, there is a reason that organic food tastes different from non-organic. Organic fruit and vegetables tend tend to grow more slowly and have lower water content which contributes to fuller flavor some people experience not all food is created equal organic fruit and vegetables are grown in nourishing conditions that contribute to a crop's overall health the more intense flavor in organic produce comes from two main factors high antioxidant levels and on average lower crop yield when there are more nutrients and nitrogen available for plant in a crop it concentrates the flavor naturally and it's how food should actually taste while Synthetic fertilizers dilute flavors by bulking up the vegetable with fillers like water. Organic farmers ensure there are enough nutrients naturally available in the soil so the crops can soak them up over time. It gives organic food real, wholesome deliciousness. When we eat organic, 
produced straight from the farm, the flavor never fails to delight us. Apple tastes delicious. Strawberries are unbelievably fragrant. And the green greens actually taste green. Not only does the food taste better by itself, you will find your cooking requires fewer additives, less salt, less sauce, because you will relish the veg tasting bite on your palate. 